So this next unit that we're doing is talking about nuclear chemistry. So to start off talking about nuclear chemistry, there's two definitions that we need to go over. The first one is for radioactivity, and basically what that is is it's materials that are spontaneously emitting radiation. So if you hear that something is radioactive, that's what it's doing. Uh, the other term we need to talk about is radiation. Radiation is the rays and particles that are emitted from the radioactive material. When we talk about radiation, there's two different types of ionizing radiation. There's natural, and then there's also man-made. Natural radiation is also called background radiation. This is the radiation that we can find in our food, in our water, in the Earth's crust right under our feet out in our atmosphere and also coming from the sun. Natural radiation accounts for about 85% of our annual exposure to radiation. Man-made radiation, on the other hand, comes from sources that people create. It accounts for about 15% of our annual exposure to radiation. Some examples of where you might be encountering radiation are from your television, from any kind of medical x-rays that you've gotten, from your smoke detectors in your house, those give off a little bit of radiation. Uh, from lantern mantles, if you've ever used those camping lanterns. Uh, from nuclear medicine, like the type that people with chemotherapy get. From tobacco. And also from some building materials, those can emit radiation as well. Radioactive decay is the process by which unstable atoms become stable by emitting radiation. So as you can see in this example, we're starting with uranium. That's what U stands for. And as it goes through the radioactive decay process, it's actually becoming different elements. And you can see that their atomic number is getting smaller as you go down. Now we're going to talk about three different types of radiation. The first type of radiation we'll talk about is called alpha radiation. Alpha radiation particles are made up of two protons and two neutrons. That gives them a charge of positive two. Here's an example nuclear equation that we can look at that has alpha radiation happening. So as you can see, what we're starting with is radium, Ra, and then it's going to go through alpha radiation and give off what we call an alpha particle. An alpha particle you'll usually see uh, denoted as HE, like the helium atom, and the reason for that is because it has an atomic number of two, meaning it has two protons, and a mass number of four, because remember we said there were two protons and two neutrons. If you add those up, that gives you four for the mass number. So it emits an alpha particle, and then the other thing that we have left over is now radon. And you can kind of see which element is going to be formed whenever you have a radiation happening. Because if you look on there, the atomic numbers have to stay the same. They have to be conserved. So if we started with 88 over here with radium, and then we lost 2 from the alpha particle, and that means we're left over with 86. In other, in other words, this one, the 86, and this one, the 2, have to add up to that amount that we started with. The atomic number has to be conserved. Same thing happens with the mass number. If we look at the mass number on top, we started with 226. We lost 4. And so what we're going to be left with is 222. 222 plus 4 adds up to be the same number as 226. The next type of radiation we're going to talk about is beta radiation. Beta particles are just one fast-moving electron. They have a negative 1 charge, and as you can see, they're denoted with that weird-looking B symbol. It's a Greek symbol beta. And so let's look at the nuclear equation that has beta radiation happening. So again, if you notice, we're going to have the mass numbers which are on top stay the same, 
and also the atomic numbers that are on bottom. They have to be conserved. So we want the same number on this side of the equation as we want on the product side. So we're starting with a atomic number of 6. Uh, remember it has negative 1, so with beta particles you're always going to lose 1. And this is kind of tricky, but it makes sense mathematically. So if you have 6 and you subtract negative 1, that's the same thing as like adding 1. So actually what you're going to be left over with is 7. An easier way of looking at it is you can say 7 plus negative 1 is equal to 6. That might make more sense. Okay, let's look at the top. On the top we have 14 for the mass number to start with. And the mass number in uh, beta particles actually doesn't change because up here your mass number of a beta particle is 0. So whatever you're left with will have the same mass number as your original element before radiation. The third type of radiation that we're going to talk about is gamma radiation. Gamma radiation is basically just high energy radiation that has no mass. It usually accompanies alpha and beta radiation, but sometimes it can be on its own. The symbol for gamma radiation, again it's a Greek symbol so it looks kind of funny, but it basically looks like that. And like we said it has no mass, so atomic number is zero and the mass number is zero also. And that's the symbol that you would use for gamma radiation. All right, so now that we know the three types of radiation and what the different equations look like, let's go ahead and practice filling in some of the nuclear reactions that have radiation. So remember, the trick here is that the mass numbers on top and the atomic numbers on bottom have to add up to the same thing on both sides. They have to be conserved. So let's take a look at this first one. So we'll look at the atomic number first. So atomic number of copper over on the front side is 29. And then on zinc, what you're left over with, it's 30. So over here, you're going to put whatever adds with 30 to make 29. So that would be negative 1 for the atomic number. OK, and then let's look at the mass number. 66 on the first one, 66 on the second one. So there's no change there, so we'll just put 0. So then we look back at our, out, our uh, radiation particles, and we see if there's one that has 0 on top for the mass number and negative 1 on bottom. And there is. That's beta radiation. <coughs> All right, let's look at the second example. So this one, we don't know what we're going to have to start with, but we do know the parts of the radiation. So over here we've got for the atomic number 77 plus 2, so we know in our answer it's going to be 79. And on the top for the mass number we have 181 plus 4, so on the top we're going to have 185. <coughs> okay, and on this one you're not sure what element it is at this point, but you know what the atomic number is. Atomic number is 79. And remember, on the periodic table, that's what elements are organized by is the atomic number. So what you're looking for is the element that has the number 79. And if you look on your periodic table, that's going to be gold, which has the symbol AU. So that's what you'd put over there. All right, let's look at the last one. So on this last one on the bottom, we've got 85 for the atomic number, and on this side we have 2. So what we're asking ourselves is what plus 2 equals 85? So the answer would be 83. And then on top we have 213, and then we lose 4. So what plus 4? equals 213 and that would be 209. And again the way we figure out what element this is is we look at the atomic number. So if you look on your periodic table the element with the atomic number of 83 is going to be bismuth which is Bi.